Hey folks, David Stewart here. Let's talk a little bit about leprosy. No, I don't mean the death album. What I mean is leprosy as it is in Lord Fowl's Bane and the entire Chronicles of Thomas Covenant. What does leprosy represent in those books and what sort of pathos does it evoke from the reader? What's its technical or functional purpose in the book? I really wanted to talk about this with the first video I made, but it would have made the video probably much too long. But I think the in entire idea of a leper, besides being a compelling idea in and of itself, actually has some more deeper meaning to it. And I don't want to put anything upon the author, um, Stephen R. Donaldson, that uh, this represents something about the way he feels in particular. But it is something that I picked up on and made me think a lot, which is that the leprosy represents a kind of social isolation or, um, let's say, social exclusion. The main thing about the way leprosy is shown in these books is that there's not, there's not a lot of physical external evidence that someone's a leper. So unlike that death cover, you know, you're not missing a nose. Um, of course, Thomas Covenant is actually missing uh, these two fingers from his hand, so and these two bones as well, I think. So he's missing, uh, he has just those, um, which is why people mistake him for Beric Halfhand, this mythical, um, this mythical figure in the creation of the land, which I think actually has some reverberating effects in the final Chronicles of Thomas Covenant. But we'll talk about that maybe another day. Anyway, it's not readily apparent externally that the person is a leper, that they have a disease which people are afraid of. I think that's an important element because most of the angst and inner anger and turmoil that Thomas Covenant has about his leprosy is directed towards himself and other people don't understand it and they don't pick up on it. So to me that represents you know, maybe the author at some point uh, leading up to the book felt like a leper. That is, you feel like a person who is outcast and considered unclean and completely uh, isolated socially for things which aren't dangerous or things which aren't your fault or things which are intrinsic to you. Rather than, you know, you're a social outcast because you're a thief, you're a social outcast because you have a disease that you didn't choose. Uh, that feeling is one of... Uh, pathos. There's an injustice to it um, that uh, that can be upsetting. So at the beginning of this first book and also the beginning of the other books, because each book begins um, in our world uh, with Thomas Covenant experiencing a different, um, different variation of these themes. So in the first one, he's going into town to pay a bill because he just really refuses to, to be socially isolated anymore. People are paying his bills on his behalf to keep him from coming into town with his leprosy, even though it's not, you know, he can't transfer leprosy to other people. It's not contagious, um, all of these reasons, and it's not even external. Uh, somebody's doing it and he rebels against this. He rebels against this imposed social isolation and goes into town. But one of the things that you immediately notice is other people in town don't recognize what's wrong with him. So what's wrong with him is internal. And so I think besides it being a vehicle for social isolation, it also represents a kind of mental illness. There's something wrong with his personality which makes people not like him rather than there's a disease which people are afraid of. And the the character himself, the protagonist himself, the narrator himself might be confused on this. And, and we actually get a bit of an unreliable narrator vibe from the intro to the story because he passes people and they just, they don't really think anything of him uh, other than I think his heavy boots or something. Uh, just he He's imagining that they are thinking bad things about him, but they just don't even recognize him. Even though he's a best-selling uh, author is one of the things in the book, the character is a best-selling author. Um, now in the second book, we have a, a variation of that theme where people actually are afraid and they've heard of him and they, they think ill of him. And he decides to go outside of the social circle to where people don't know him, right? So he takes, he goes out and hitchhikes with a trucker, who's a one-armed trucker, who has a visible scar missing a one arm on his arm, and he, you know, um, Thomas Covenant has the fingers, and they go to a bar, and it's very weird when when the the bar seems very weird, but it plays into the the most of the book where he's actually in the land, he's in the fantasy world. He goes to this bar. 
And what happens is everyone everyone comes to figure out he's a leper. He's misidentified as the wrong person, somebody he doesn't want to be identified with, and then it comes out that he's actually Thomas Covenant, this legendary leper that uh, you know the truck driver confides in him that he thinks that uh, you know Thomas Covenant is a bad guy that he should stay away from everyone or maybe I'm trying to remember the details like maybe he should have been killed or something like that um, but it it's a different variation on that theme so rather than him going into the community trying to rebel against the community that refuses to accept him he's trying to go to another community which then rejects him so with those two things together it makes me think again it's about being a social outcast feeling that there's nowhere where you fit in and there's no one who will accept you and you will automatically be rejected even though there's no visible and obvious reason for you to be rejected and that means to me the narrator on some level has like a mental illness and doesn't understand why people don't like him. He thinks people don't like him for reasons that uh, have to do with his disease when it's really quite possibly for some other reason, including his wife leaving him. You know, his wife leaves him to protect their son, but is that all there is to it? Uh, it always makes me wonder when I'm when I'm reading those those little introductory things. Uh, so, what does the leprosy actually represent? So, I think it represents those two things. I think it represents um, a personality defect that the narrator is unaware of that causes social isolation and it represents social isolation itself the feeling of somebody being a leper now this gets flipped on its head uh, particularly in i mean it gets flipped on its head in, in all the books but particularly in the first book it's quite shocking how it's flipped on its head because he goes to the land and not only do people not know what leprosy is and not care that he has it they're confused that he's not well, that they can't see whether he's well or not because they have like an extra sensory perception where they can see more, they, they have an extra sense for how things are. They can see if things are diseased or if things are healthy and they can't see whether he's diseased or healthy. They have no uh, ability to pierce this veil and judge him beforehand and it it's upsetting to him because he refuses to accept that's part of that's the other half of it half of it's a leper the other half he's an unbeliever he doesn't believe that people could actually see and accept him for who he is or see and accept him beyond his disease even if they know of the disease and know what it is that they could still accept him is an unfathomable reality to him he rejects the possibility of that is actually being real and that's where it gets flipped on its head he also gets cured from cured of leprosy while he's in the land so he gets this hurt loam which is like a mud that cures him um, he gets it put on him and it grows his nerves back and he heals and he's healthy again so not only do people not care that he has leprosy even though he's continually saying you know um i'm a leper i'm a leper i'm a leper he's not a leper anymore because it's been cured but people don't care that he's a leper so he has no excuse for people to be rejecting him and what you see there is that he's he's quite the jerk particularly in the first book he's also a jerk in the second book but the first book he's he's really full bore unbeliever very very harsh to the people around them and they don't seem to hate him for it now there's one character who who hates him not for what he says or for some intrinsic quality because of what he did uh, to her daughter right and we talked about that last week um, so that's the exception somebody hates him for what he did actually two people but the mother and the the girl's boyfriend um, people hate him for what he did but they don't hate him for some something that he can't change something that's intrinsic so he has no excuses so the curing of the leprosy and the fact that people don't care about the leprosy go hand in hand uh, they they are a confrontation with the psyche of the narrator where it's like when you have these things that you imagine are separating you from people removed and they accept you do you still reject them do you still put out the personality and the the anger that pushes people away and makes them hate you and that's really the the personality exploration that has to do with the the leprosy is that he's continually re not just rejecting his reality but rejecting the people around him who want to accept him want to make him important want to make him part of their lives don't care that he's a leper don't judge him beforehand but only judge him by his actions uh and even towards the end of the story he becomes a kind of hero as a result of that is that once he is finally overcomes that and gets over himself and gets over this idea that he's a leper for no reason or that he's an outcast 
without reason, he's able to actually act in a heroic manner towards the end of the book, um, and it really really shift th- shift things up. And that's a theme that you see uh, definitely in the first three books. It's it's quite interesting um, how that works. So anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about today: the leprosy and the idea of feeling like a leper, a social outcast, and how those two things go hand in hand, and how the whole idea of going to the land is to flip those feelings on their head and force the narrator to confront the reality of himself outside of those things. Um, So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Of course, you can find my books wherever you want to buy digital books, and you can buy physical copies on Amazon as well as other places too. Um, The newest book is Voices of the Void, which is a, uh, well, that's not it. That's the second newest book. Second newest book is High Fantasy. It's called Crown of Sight. This is a two-hour read. You can get this for 99 cents on Amazon. I'm quite fond of this particular story. Uh, Voices of the Void is the newest one. This is sci-fi horror. And of course, if you join my mailing list, you will get a copy of my High Fantasy book, Water of Awakening. Thanks so much, guys. And let me know what you think about this particular topic and Chronicles of Thomas Covenant in general. Uh, What's your opinion of them? And do you think people should read them? Uh, Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time.